are we talking about today? I'll tell you what we're talking about. We're talking about pre-performance rituals. Don't worry about it if you can't see the board. We're talking about the ultimate setup. Why should you not worry about it that you can't see the board? Because I'm going to send you the link afterwards with what's on the board. So if there's a glare, don't worry about it. I could adjust it so you can see it, but otherwise, um, this way, it'll allow you to just focus on what we're talking about. So what did I just do? I just did probably the most commonly known because it's, it's referred to as America's Game. Um, we're at the training center here, by the way. Uh, you see the logos up on the wall behind us of all the different schools. There's a bunch of different logos going all the way behind the board too. But what we're talking about is pre-performance ritual. Ritual, if you're worried about it from like a religious standpoint, you can just consider it routine. Okay, think about it as a routine, something that has like a syntax or an order and it's done prior to something else. It could be considered ceremonial if you want to, whatever works for you. Again, like make use of whatever we're sharing as it best relates and is relevant to you. So, all right, let's go through pre-performance ritual. So it's something, A, number one, it needs to be done consistently, okay? It needs to be done consistently in an order in order prior to an event, okay? Like a morning routine, okay? Morning routine, perfect example. Uh, every morning you should start the same way, you should get up at the same time, that's, that's widely documented. You shouldn't have weekends where you're sleeping and stuff like that, you should get up at the same time. Maybe you need to go to bed earlier or something else like that every once in a while, but you should have the same start time, you should have the same start food. Um, you know, for the most people, that's gonna be your fats and your proteins. And that's how you should start off the day and hydration and all the other systems that you go through in the morning with your habits, your morning ritual. So that's one. Two, creating familiarity, okay? Creating familiarity and calm. Why is this important? Okay, well, if we get into the six basic human needs, which we're not going to, but if we were to get into six basic human needs, six basic human needs are things that we need to um, have in our life to allow fulfillment and to allow balance and things like that. So when you have one of them in, in a process or in a procedure, it's, it creates um, an enhanced performance. So creating familiarity and calm, like your favorite pair of pants, okay? Do you have a fair pair of blue jeans? Or if you're lucky enough to be somewhere where it's just beautiful all the time, like San Diego, a favorite pair of board shorts or something like that? Sure you do. When you wear them, you feel better, okay? Why? Um, because that's gonna take us right into number three. Number three, it engages one of your senses, okay? So engage as many senses as needed to root this process, this ritual in your mind that it's going to enhance your performance. Now, this could be, when we say anything that you want to enhance your performance on, it could be a test in school, it could be a presentation at work, it could be a practice, it could be you know, just sitting down to try and get more out of a study session, trying to get more out of a video session, trying to get more out of a training session, or maybe it's a performance. Maybe it's maybe it's at a theater. Um, maybe it's uh, it's at a game for you if you're an athlete. Well, obviously, it's mostly athletes that we're talking to, but we're talking about performance here as it relates to anything. So engage as many senses as needed to re in the mind, the root in the mind, touch, sound, vision, taste, smell, proprioception, vestibular system, and also interoception. We're not gonna get much into interoception because it's gonna get a little confusing for you guys. But basically that's like when you know you gotta go to the bathroom or you feel hungry, you feel thirsty, okay, that's an internal system that like just alerts you to the fact that something's going on. Sometimes it's misunderstood, um, but the bottom line is that is one of the senses. It's widely recognized. So. For a second, let's take to go through these all. Touch, okay, you could be hitting the body with the bat or something like that, or like if it's a different sport, maybe it's slapping the face or whatever. Whatever it is you do, do the same thing that you would normally do so that you put yourself into that, hey, I'm getting prepared to perform. Sound, repeat a mantra to yourself or something like that. I believe there was a movie where I saw, um, maybe it was Willie Beeman or something like that from Any Given Sunday, he was talking about I'm the greatest player in the world, I'm a great, oh no wait, that was a, that was a different character, that was a receiver, you're saying I'm the greatest wide receiver to ever live. Anyways, whatever your mantra is, make it good for you, make it useful for you and, and relevant. Vision, focus on the same point maybe, like if I'm stepping up to bat, maybe I'm gonna look at the pitcher, 
Okay? Maybe if I'm taking a test, I'm going to look down at the table, I'm going to look at my hand. Or Focus on something you can control. You always focus on what you can control because that's what we want to come back to, focusing on what we can control. Okay? Then taste. Maybe it's a piece of gum, maybe it's an Altoid, maybe it's toothpaste, etc. That that's, taste is a little bit more difficult. Okay, smell, an essential oil, maybe on your wrist or something like that, or on your shoulder, something that you can smell that draws, smells very powerful. I mean, um, a lot of baseball players remember the, the smell of the freshly cut grass and it takes them back to their younger years and, and playing. Okay, uh, proprioception, twirling, twirling a bat, you know, something like that. Um, something that you're doing with your hands um, is you, really, really useful typically. Uh, vestibular system, maybe Vestibular uh, might be like a kind of a figure eight pattern or something else like that. It could be tumbling. It might be if you're about to get ready for a test, maybe closing your eyes or something um, and then moving around a little bit. That's helpful. Interoception, controlling our breathing is one of the ways to help um, the body respond accordingly to whatever we're getting prepared for. Okay, number four, the goal is to set yourself up for the best outcome. It's like setting a table for an important event. Anything that we're going to use this for, it's because it's an important event to us. That's why we're doing it, okay? It's an important event. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, if it's not an important event, then don't use it. Because um, then you're just, it's like the boy who cried wolf. You know, you're, you're, you want to train your body, though, to be prepared for these situations. Okay, last but not least, here's where we take action. This is where you come into play. Is it relevant to you, okay? Is it relevant to you? All right. No, it's not relevant to you. Okay, that's fine. If it's not relevant to you, get out of here then. Okay. Okay. Where does it apply? If the answer is yes, where does it apply? Where does it apply to you? If you're a parent, if you're a trainer, if you're a coach, where it applies to you will probably be where it applies to your student athlete. But you should put it into practice too, because your student athlete is going to be watching you, and if they don't see you doing this in your life, they might not listen to you too often, and they might not think that you're walking through the process with them, which you should be, especially if you want to gain their respect. Next thing, what would it look like if we're successful at this, okay? What's the outcome look like? You gotta rehearse it in your mind, okay? What does it look like? Then develop a pattern, again, that goes back to number three, that creates um, connection with the different senses, as many as necessary, and but no more than that, okay? Whatever is gonna work the best for you. Some people have, um, very heightened senses in particular areas. Maybe you can just focus on a few of those things. Make sure that it's short enough that you can replicate it quickly and that it's not going to be something that detracts from the experience itself. Um, then after you figure out what it's going to look like, go out there and test it. Okay? Go out there and test it. Test it before practice. Don't test it before you take the SATs. Okay? Don't test it on the SAT day. All right? Test it on a practice SAT. All right? Same thing. Before a big performance, test it at a practice, at a rehearsal, at something else. If you're about to propose to somebody, practice the rehearsal before, you know, practice and rehearse it before you go propose to the person so that you kind of get it down a little bit. Um, that would be an example of a performance that you want to be important. Like you're setting the dinner table for a proposal for somebody. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different than setting a regular dinner table. It's like you're trying to stack everything as well as you can possibly stack it to allow the dominoes to set up so that when you're ready from the fall, they fall, okay? Next, review the results. After you tested it, review the results. How did you do? Did it work? How can you optimize it? What can be better about it? Maybe what could be quicker about it so that you take away from it? Make it as simple as possible, okay? But as complicated as necessary. As simple as possible, but as complicated as necessary. And then retest it. After you reviewed it, after you came up with some better ideas, Go back and retest it, okay? Now, I spent a little bit more than five minutes. I want to spend like three to seven minutes on these. They're definitely all going to be less than 10, but this one's a big one. Pre-performance ritual, the ultimate setup. Setups are important for big moves, okay? You have a big move, a setup's important. Let's say you're a pitcher. Let's, we got the Cooperstown shirt on anyway. Let's say you're a pitcher. Maybe you're coming with a fastball. If they know you're coming with that fastball, maybe you want to set it up with something else. This is the ultimate setup, a ritual, your pre-performance ritual. Good luck with your rituals and make sure that you ask how is this relevant to you and apply it today.